TGR News, broadcasting from the State of Israel. Welcome back to TGR News. Shalom, shalom from Israel. Well, we got five days left with Lapid holding the uh, mandate to, uh, to uh, make a government. And it don't look like he's going to be able to, thank God, it don't no. look like he's going to be able to put a government together. So we're probably going into the fifth election. You know, but what I don't understand, I, I've heard some politicians say that, that, the, that the president could give another mandate and give uh, Bennett a mandate. I've, they have been talking about that lately. I've never heard of that before, where he no. does it the third time on the same election. You're right. Mm -hmm. And if he does, I wonder what would happen. I don't know, but it seems to me like, you know, we, uh, you know Israel really doesn't have a written constitution. Right, exactly. So that's the, another problem, too, that uh, I would think the prime minister would want to try to work on yeah, right away. Absolutely. But anyway, we'll see what happens. I personally believe uh, uh, the, uh, the fifth election is probably the best solution. At this point, I agree. At this yeah. moment, yes. As but bad you, as that is, it probably is all, the best. All, all of this confusion about uh, BB and... Uh, and Lapid, you know, all, all this with, uh, on those two mandates, uh, and the, the public is getting pulled to the left, pulled to the right, pulled to the center. They don't know. They're confusing everyone, you know, and uh, it's not a good thing to have no. everyone confused right before an election. Yeah. And another thing is you saying about how the, the Israel doesn't really have a written uh, 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 constitution like America is true because that's why they're right. Lately, we've been talking about how in the news they talk how they're trying to change the uh, the system around and and trying to get laws passed where you can only have two terms, you know, or which I think is a, is a good idea. Or they're trying to make a law. Basically, they're trying to make two laws that make uh, our election exactly like America, where where you can only win for two terms and whoever gets the most votes just wins. Period. Yeah, there is uh, no. They vote for a person instead of a party. Yeah, well, they tried that once already. We ended up with uh, Ikut Barak, right? And yeah. he almost gave the, the whole farm away. Yeah. You know, so and they so they, they went right back to the, the, old, the old system. The old system very quickly. I don't know if they're willing to try that again or not. Yeah. Well, Biden also is telling Israel now the riots in Jerusalem has to stop and, uh, and, and that we need a two-state solution. And, you know, Biden, our good friend, right? What I don't understand is why is he so worried about the riots in Jerusalem when there's it's nothing compared to the riots and the anti-Semitism that's happening all over his country. All over, all over America, yeah. yeah. I just watched the thing on television yesterday about Portland, Oregon. There must not be anything left in Portland, Oregon. They must be burned to the ground already. You know, and uh, it's not, it's just that a lot of cities around America are like that. I, I don't know, but, uh, you know, I haven't been in America in over 20 years. Yeah. But, uh, I don't even know if I'd recognize it. From what I see on the TV, I don't even know if I'd recognize it. Yep. Even the country uh, places. I was watching the, uh, I don't know where, well, probably, 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 probably don't want us to talk about America or let's talk about Israel, but I really don't understand how American, Americans, Americans, you know, the, the, the yeah. citizens of America can go for this. I, yeah. I, I mean, I mean they, like, they got all kinds of samples. They can look at Venezuela, they can look at what's happening with the socialism all around the world. And uh, it don't work. It just yeah. it, it it brings in mass poverty. Yeah, not prosperity, but poverty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, we just had this little war. It was eleven days. Hamas uh, fired for about forty five hundred rockets, and there was thirteen deaths in Israel. And now uh, the, the world has given them already close to four hundred million, with another with another five hundred million on the way. And as usual. The, uh, the Hamas in Gaza, instead of putting it towards the people and making the, the, the communities better and, and, and it's just going straight into the stockpile of the weapons and the tunnels for, for fighting and everything. I think what people don't understand is Hamas is just a terrorist organization, just like all the other ones. And people hear, but they don't understand what it means for these guys to be suicide bombers and suicide terrorists. They could care less. That's why every, every time we, we feel like we've spanked them hard enough to be quiet for a while, they're not quiet because we spanked them so hard. They could care less if they died or if their neighbor died or anything like that. The only thing that keeps them quiet for a while is they, shot, they just shot in 11 days 4,500 rockets. Now they have to rebuild that. And that's what keeps them quiet for a while. And they get the money and they, they rebuild and then they go again. I got an email a while back that I thought was hilarious, really. It was a lady in uh, some state in the United States. I don't even want—I don't even want to narrow it down to what state. I don't want to name her. And she's a serious person. She really, she is a very serious person. But maybe not too bright. 
but uh, <laughs> God bless her. But she, she says, I don't understand why uh, the, the Israelis don't allow the, the, the uh, pa Palestinians in Gaza to have uh, the Iron Dome. Yeah. And Israel should share the Iron Dome with them. Yeah. yeah. Now that just shows you right there how messed up people's thinking is yep. when it comes to Israel. And, uh, you know, this hatred has been going on for 4,500 years, you know. It's, it's nothing new. Yeah, no. You know, it's, uh, it didn't start in 1948 or in, in the 30s in, 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 in Germany and the Holocaust. It didn't yeah. start then. It started four, over 4,000 years ago. Way, way yeah. So it's, uh, the, the cure is spiritual, and, uh, and you can put all the missiles you want to try to come to try to solve a spiritual problem, but it it's, gonna it's, it's not going to solve a spiritual problem. You're not going to solve a spiritual problem with a physical solution. Yeah. If we could figure out, if we had leaders that would try to get uh, both sides together to pray together, but then one can't pray to Allah and the other one prays to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can't do that because that, yeah. that ain't going to work. So any, any, any kind of turn you make you, to try you, to solve this solution, you run into a wall. You run into a wall. And Absolutely. so that's why it's been going on for, for 4,500 years. Absolutely. Well, one of the main reasons why Gaza doesn't need an Iron Dome and we do need an Iron Dome because we don't just shoot recklessly into their neighborhoods to shoot to kill their people. Iron Dome was was was, was born out of necessity, not because we just wanted it, right? Can you imagine how many dead Israelis there'd be today if it wasn't for the Iron Dome? Four thousand five hundred rockets into our cities, not military bases, not the into the cities. We're just into, average citizens. Aim, yeah. Aiming that straight at our civilian population, there would be thousands, tens of thousands of dead Israelis right now if it wasn't for the Iron Dome. So. You want, to, you want to know about a miracle? Thank God for the Iron Dome. Absolutely. It, it is a miracle. Yeah, and there's another miracle we talked about last week where in Zdero, the only house in the in a, in a congested neighborhood that, that the family was not in and they left to, to go up north, that's the only house that three rockets came through the Iron Dome and hit that same house. You know, you know the old saying, lightning don't strike twice in the same place? Well, it's pretty yeah. beautiful here. It did that three times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a thing. I'll tell you a story. Well, I want to do it today. I'll tell you a story about a trip in, in Cairo. Mom and I used to go to Cairo. You went to Cairo a few times, too. Yep. I remember the belly dancers. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to talk about it. You know, it was in the 80s, right? Okay. I, I, was, oh, yeah, I remember got, I was a little kid. Yeah, yeah, now, I, yeah. Was, I was a little kid. I was okay. a little kid. So we have, we I had, was like six, five years old or something. Yeah, about five or six years old. And uh, uh, in the evening, they got these... Uh, the, uh, the diners that on boats they go back and forth up and down the, the Nile River, and, and and they usually have belly dancers that walk in the aisle and the top the two three deck layers and and uh, Joel was absolutely he really liked that. Yeah, yeah, I remember I didn't eat that much that day. <laughs> no, he, he, he <laughs> couldn't keep his eyes off the belly dancer. Five years old, I knew I was going to have a problem later on in life with him. You know. Yeah, but, but, I, he, I, but I worked he worked out. out. He worked out all right. I, I worked out all right. At least the old, at least the older says so. <laughs> Get back to the news, yo. Yeah, okay. Well, back to Gaza again. The uh, apparently, like what I was saying earlier, is you know we did. The, people think we won the war and stuff like that because we we, we did we got them hard and where it hurts the Hamas and their strongholds. But apparently, we didn't do much because the, the day after the, the the war was over, they were up and down the streets having victory parades, how they won and everything else. It's uh, un unbelievable. It, how, yeah. how, how they can even. Think that way. Think that way. You know, I don't. I don't believe the. I don't believe the people in God think that way at all. I, think I, I can't. They can't possibly. No, not, not the destruction that they've got this time is really something. Let me say something. Uh, clear, clear something up with some people. You know, uh, everyone's saying why don't why don't we go in there? And I was been one of them in the in the in the, in the, in the past. I used to think it's myself. Why don't we just go in there and wipe them out? Just completely, totally wipe them out. Uh, but you know you can't do that. There's a lot of reasons you can't do it. Humanitarian reason for one reason, yeah. because our belief in God and, and, and the way we should conduct ourselves is another reason. But the biggest reason is you can't do that because it's just impossible to do that. Yeah. It's not possible to do that. But so what Israel's faced with, we're not fighting a country, we're not fighting a government, we're fighting a terrorist organization who has, ha has held their whole population of a country Hostage. And hostage. The same thing is happening right now in Lebanon yep. with Hezbollah. Yep. So you, you know, so the only thing you could do is you can just whip them as hard as you can, like you was talking about a little later about. Yeah. You have to, you have to do that as hard as you can to try to get a, an area of peace. The last time was what was 2014? Yep, and we got three and a half years of 
complete silence. Yeah, there you go. And then it started with the little the tick with for the track, trick, like you call tr it. The trickle, yeah. yeah. Uh, here a miss one every now and then. It's, it's, it, they, they sort of programmed the the thinking of the Israelis to accept this tick for tack yeah. thing. You throw a missile at us, we'll go blow up one of your empty buildings. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what a lot of the Israelis are really, are really upset about, and I 100% agree. Well, a lot of people probably, you guys might not even know this, for years, it's been about almost, get, coming close for two years now, uh, Hamas has uh, two uh, uh, bodies of uh, IDF soldiers and two s uh, Israeli citizens hostage apparently alive and uh and and israel does not understand israel israelis in israel do not understand which i agree how in this last uh, conflict we didn't work that in to part of the the ceasefire to get those those bodies and those two citizens back yeah especially the two citizens yeah especially especially the two who are still alive and being tortured uh yeah we uh you know this is another thing that the general public in israel has a, has against bibi uh, Netanyahu, they uh, they can't understand why he doesn't bring that up to the top of the negotiation table. Absolutely, uh, and they're right. And uh, all the, the the big generals of the IDF, they are not, not happy about it either. Nope, nope, nope. Absolutely not. Yeah, and especially the parents of the one with the missing kids, uh, they're really not happy about it. Yeah. Well, you know, in Israel, it's been what? It's been over a month since we've had any Corona news, right? Today, today we're going to have a little bit of Corona news. Okay. The uh, June the 1st, which is the next few days, Israel is dropping every law, every rule, everything that was ever made for Corona, including the green passports. and That's it. We're done. Finished. Everything is done. Yeah. Except for one, one restriction. It's going to stay. For any non-vaccinated person, traveler, doesn't matter Israeli or not, non-vaccinated traveler coming into the country has to take a 10-day quarantine. But you know what that tells me something it's a little it's a little deceptive what they're saying because they're saying now it's not necessary uh, the, the, the everything is back to normal you don't have to have a green passport and everything like that but then they turn around and say just what you said yeah that when you come back to the country you got to prove that you had the shot right. or or that you had the corona and got or, over yeah it. or take 10 day quarantine or take, exactly or, or, um, oh we have a new head of Mossad. uh his name is david barnea he uh, obviously, usually, as usual, the, the the new heads of Mossad are usually people you've never heard of. It's not someone you've known yeah. before because they usually come up from inside the Mossad, done things that you don't know anything about. So what they usually do is they have interviews with people that know them and work with them. You know, in the, you know how they do all blacked out and the voice is all funny. So this guy seems like he's he's a pretty good guy and seems like he's gonna be on the ball. But Bibi told him publicly when they when he when he announced him as head of Mossad that he has one the first and most important mission he has is to stopping the uh, uh, Iran from being uh, achieving nuclear capabilities. Yeah, and they just jumped up to thirty uh, to sixty percent uh, Iranian. Uh, this is really something. This is, this is there's no reason to have that sixty percent unless you're going to make a bomb. It has, it. it has nothing to do with the production of electricity or anything else. It only it's only good to, for making bombs. Yep. And we're talking about someone who talks about once to annihilate us, to, to, to kill all the Jews and to wipe all Israel off the map. And we're just sitting here, with smiling. The, huh? Yeah, sitting here smiling. Sitting here smiling, waiting for it. It's like. Uh, Yep. I don't know what's going to happen. Then on the other hand, you know, we, we Jewish people like to say on one hand and on the other hand, yep. but uh, on the other hand, we don't know, we really don't want to start a third world war either. And the Israeli news during the uh, this last war, this last conflict we had, everyone was surprised, kept talking about the news, how they were surprised about how B Biden gave us support and let us take care of what we need to have to do. And I always, from the very beginning, I said, it's, well, well, you can't, s no, he's not. You know, it's just, he's, he's just not attacking us on all fronts. That's all he's doing. He's not supporting us. He's just not attacking us on all fronts. Because as soon as he's making deals with Iran, uh, you know, uh, but, but, he, said, but he, leaves, uh, he stays out of our business with Gaza, that doesn't mean he's on our side. That just means he's choosing his battles. You yeah. Know? And he just gave uh, Hezbollah, he's not Hezbollah, but uh, Hamas in, in Gaza, millions of dollars. Yep. And uh, and saying like it's only going to go for um, a humanitarian uh, and it's reason. Not. It's it, but Hamas controls the, the purse strings. They they got the purse strings. Yep. The all the billions of dollars they got before they spent making what they call the metro underground uh, tunnels all underneath of Gaza, yep. where they can put their soldiers down in, in case it is an invasion, a ground invasion by Israel. 
Israel comes in, most of the soldiers are down. That maybe they go over top of them, they come up behind them, and they all sorts. Of, they have all sorts of plans like that. Yeah. Well, Ichia Sinwai, Sinwai, uh, the the Hamas head spokesperson, right? Uh, he's already publicly said. For that money, exactly that money that, that you were talking about, he's already got plans and publicly said what he's going to use to rebuild the metro, to rebuild the, the stockpile of weapons. I mean, he's not even hiding it. Yeah, and then in case America has any other t tax money left, he, uh, Biden gives it to Iran now. Yeah. Can you imagine he gave Iran a few billion dollars just for what? Yeah. Why? And uh, you know. Well, you know, I think the average American, if you could get to the get them to understand the average American, because, you know, Americans are big about where my where their tax dollars are going. Right. Yeah. If you could explain to the average American that the money that he made and he paid taxes on <clears throat> is going towards weapons to a terrorist organization, I think they would they would speak up. Oh, well, I think so, too. Well, I guess we'll end on that note. Does you have something else to say? No, I'm, I'm finished. I'm done. <laughs> OK, well, see you next time. Thank you very much. And sure. don't forget to support us on the golden report dot com. Yeah. Shabbat Shalom from Israel.